Today it's all about soil. I want to talk about soil type, how to feed into your soil type, is there a soil type that's better than any other soil type, and does it even freaking matter? I did a video recently where I pulled a couple of cores from this lawn and from the green down below, and I showed them here, one that's sand based, one that's clay, more of a clay loam base in the main lawn and on the main body here. We're gonna dig a couple more up today and we're gonna take a look at those. So let's go ahead and pull those. We'll pull as deep as we possibly can, so maybe we could even look at some root structure and some things like that. Go down into the ground, set those out, and then talk about how to feed into those two very different soil types and how you can get the biggest benefit out of your fertilizer. If there's one thing that I wanna to convey to you guys out there is I wanna show you how to take your lawns from good to great. I know a lot of scratch golfers and they don't play on the PGA Tour. The difference between them and a professional who's making millions of dollars is five or six different strokes. And I want to show you guys those five or six different stroke pickups. That's the idea here. We can take a lawn that's functioning good in any soil condition and make it great. So as we go through this, I really want you to pay attention to the details about the soil types themselves, what you can do to feed them better and more efficiently, and also what I've done differently between my sand base system and up on the clay loam base system. All right guys, here's the two soil types that we're gonna be dealing with. You can see roots at the bottom of this, very thick, spongy clay. Oh, look at a little, little worm, isn't that nice? Over here, not so much. Breaking apart, you saw how right when I pulled that core, half of this broke out. There could have been some roots in it, but not enough to hold on to this non-sticky, coarse, porous soil. This is a predominantly clay soil. My CEC is about 29, okay? That means I have really small, tight soil particles that bind together really easily. I'm gonna break this right here so we can look at this. Give us a little bit of a better view. This is how the soil profile looks before you take a spade to it and tighten everything up around the edges. It's actually pretty well, you could call it aerated. Um, not everything is bound tightly together, but if I take it, I pack it, it's going to hold that shape and that's going to be problematic. There's our compaction, right? But the roots are doing their job. They are aerating and mining and working in the soil and doing what they're supposed to do. Look at this. I'll give you a little better perspective. So this is truly, if it were to harden up, it would basically just turn into a rock. And then if I started to grind it down afterwards, it gets really, really super fine powder. But this actually hasn't been watered. I was just thinking about this. Uh, I haven't done a deep watering on this, I think in three or four days. So it's still holding moisture extremely well. Here's my sand and it's already drying out just even right now, it's just falling apart. It doesn't take much for this thing to lose its moisture very fast. Uh, and that includes any nutrients that I put through are going to flush through this also very, very quickly. So this is my complete opposite end of the spectrum. Very low organic matter in here, uh, really no real soil life to speak of. There are worms that run through the green and of course you're gonna have all of your bacteria and everything else that's living inside here. but for the most part, you don't have this hardy, dense, living soil like this. Okay, so let's talk about feeding for soil type. My bent grass green is a built green. There are places in the country that grow not quite on this course of sand, but they grow on a very sandy medium. I've had people send me soil samples that have three and a half to five CEC. And that means that your soil isn't going to wanna to hold on to nutrients being applied. They're going to move very quickly through the whole soil profile. You're gonna drain water very quickly. All of those things are gonna happen, but you're also always gonna have very aerated and loose soil if you're in that sort of low CEC category. On the other hand, the high CEC category, this thing holds a ton of nutrients. And I've mentioned in previous videos, I have potassium levels up in the 550 to 600 parts per million in this soil. A very high pH, high calcium, high magnesium, uh, I run about a 7.8, 7.9, depending on where you sample. So it's a high pH, but I don't do anything to adjust that. It just let it grow in what it's going to grow in. 
this soil is going to function more like a slow release fertilizer. Think about that for a second. If I fill the cup, if I am to put my fertilizer out, I can put a lot down on this material. It is going to slowly work its way down into the soil and it's going to slowly release back up into the plant. So it can take a lot at a time. When this hits saturation point, however, water runs off and it runs off quickly. Nothing else will get down inside of it until there's an opportunity for these roots to suck up whatever moisture they can. This on the other hand, no matter how much water I throw at it, it's dry very, very, very quickly. This has gotten a solid watering this morning uh, of about a quarter of an inch and it, you wouldn't know. You, you wouldn't be able to tell that that happened. It passes through and it passes through quickly. So in order for me to feed this soil properly, feed this turf in this soil properly, I should say, I have to feed it more often. It doesn't mean I have to feed it more nutrients. And sometimes when you come into a clay system that is, you take a soil test and it just doesn't show a whole lot of nutrition, you're gonna be filling that thing back up or completely disregard it and just go and rate things off of this visual scale. So if you have a more coarse sand, plan on feeding more regularly. Not a lot of nutrients, lower amounts, you're still gonna hit your tolerances, your, your beauty tolerances, all that kind of stuff, but feed more often with less material. If you're in a clay system, you can feed less often with more material. And if you've got somewhere in the middle of this, more like a loam, sandy loam or clay loam soil, you're gonna have soil that actually drains well, still holds nutrients really well, and you can feed it on the schedule that you see fit. But when we're talking opposite ends of the spectrum, you can feed less often heavier, more often lighter. So one question and a topic that comes up on occasion is how important is healthy soil in turf grass? Well, if we take everything off of a visual scale, it's not important at all. It's just a placeholder for this turf. That's it. You can always feed your turf without ever knowing what's going on underneath it. You don't have to know. You can judge the health of your soil by what you're having to do to it. But again, does it really matter? Out here, on this lawn, I like to take care of everything. The grass looks great. The soil is being well cared for. But does it really matter? At the end of the day, everything is gonna come down to color, density of turf. You can grow turf on rocks. You can grow turf on concrete. You can grow turf anywhere. There's a reason that there is fertilizer manufacturing. If you continue to feed it and you continue to water it, it's gonna grow. You don't need to have healthy soil, but let's talk about maybe some of the benefits that go beyond color. Drought tolerance is huge. A healthier soil profile with more life and higher organic matter is going to hold more water. That moisture is gonna be vital to your plants during times of stress. That's one reason to be thinking about your soil more often. Number two, Healthier soil, more organic soil, soil that has life in it, is less likely to need aeration. It's less likely to need dethatching. It's going to have a good balance of life that's working with you. Three, with that increase in organic matter and healthier soil profiles, you get free nitrogen. As things decompose in the ground, Small amounts every year, a small bit of your humus, your organic matter, three to 5% of it is gonna break down into nitrogen. Now, the thing that you need to sort of realize about soil health and soil life, you can have terrible looking turf and your soil life could be off the charts because soil life exists in a carbon rich atmosphere that's also low in nitrogen. So when we start feeding the turf, they really enjoy that, but they're working hard to get nitrogen out of that decomposition as well. So at the end of the day, does your soil does your soil type even matter? To me, it does. It absolutely does. I believe that there's an increase in productivity of the turf. I believe there's an increase in the health of the turf. And I, I actually think that I have to do less in order to have it look better. The healthier my soil is, the more moisture it holds, uh, the more it can hold and retain nutrients, the more it cycles its own 
just makes for life way easier. I can tell you that down here on this green, it takes a lot. It takes a lot in order to keep it in good shape. This is a daily process. Up on the upper lawn, it's like an every two week process. This requires a ton of work and effort and energy. There is nothing in this soil because it's not, it's sand. There's nothing here. That means it is surviving off only what I give it. Even if this builds up organic matter over time, which it will, and it'll run probably 1.4, 1.8% over time, it's gonna give me a tiny little bit of help, but it's still going to be 98% sand. It's just gonna be sand filling in this space. So I have to feed this and feed this and feed this in order for it to be a good, healthy, high-performing turf. That's what we could look at today on does it really matter? Does focusing on the soil life matter? I'm not really trying to do anything down here. I, I'm not trying to increase organic matter. I'm not trying to make any major changes. I've got enough peat moss in here. In fact, I'm gonna put more sand down. I don't actually want to increase organic matter down here. I don't run the biostimulants down here really very often at all. This gets a very minimal amount compared to what I do on the upper lawn. This is an area that I wanna keep firm. I don't wanna build up a ton of organic matter. I don't wanna aerate this, fill it back in so that roots can grow back in and create more organic matter that way. I don't wanna do any of that. I wanna keep this thing sealed and tight. Now, this is gonna be different than a golf green that people are playing on all the time because I'm the only person that comes out here. I am the traffic on this. That's not very much. That's not going to hurt this green. There's not balls spinning into it. There's not really having any of those issues. So I get to treat this very, very differently than other sports turf. Here's how I want to wrap this up. Number one, soil type. It doesn't matter. You have what you have. You can work with what you have. Work with nature, not against her. If you want to re-aggregate soil, you can always do that. If you have sandy soil and you want to make it more organic, uh, Bring in topsoil, bring in peat moss, bring in compost. You can do that. You can bring it up and you can increase your organic matter that way. That's fine. If you have clay and you want to break it down further, you can add sand. You can make that more porous. You can aerate and remove cores and add sand to that and you can bring that in. You also, as your roots cycle and the grass grows, you're going to add more organic matter that way. Grass is just constantly adding carbon to the soil. It's just bringing it in and bringing it in and increasing every year that it possibly can. It's going to add more and more and more to the soil. It's incremental, it takes time, but it's always going to do it. Now number two, feeding for your soil type. We talked about this. Sand, feed regular, a lot. Every 10 days, every two weeks, no more than every three weeks. It's clay, you can feed one time and wait two or three months and feed again. You don't have to be hitting it all the time because you can go heavier at once. Does soil matter? No, when we're judging everything by visual, we're feeding it and we're feeding it and we're feeding it and we're feeding it to make up for the soil. If we don't know what it is, we are going to give the grass everything it could possibly need to grow despite what it's growing in. This area before this was all sand was all rock and my grass was beautiful out here. Solid freaking rock. One of the biggest things, and I mentioned using biostimulants here versus up on the lawn. I don't wanna have this crazy amount of organic matter down here because that's just going to increase maintenance on the green. Up on the upper lawn, however, I do those on a regular basis because I continue to stretch that root mass deeper and deeper and deeper and grow more organic, more healthy soil all the time. That's why I do it. I push that growth. And the benefit of that is when I do feed, I get more out of every single feeding I put down, which means I'm feeding less and less and less and less as time goes on because my system is working more and more and more for me. That's why I do it. That's the main reason. That's what helps, that's what the biggest difference is, that's what sets my lawn apart from others, and it truly is a very low maintenance, sustainable system. But, if you wanna see a little bit more about things like this, you can check out this video right over here. And I'll talk to you later. See ya.